Today we're doing the Space Side Backbenchers of Diageo. Uh, Diageo is huge. They own more malt distilleries in, in Scotland than anyone. <clears throat> and quite a lot of those actually get out, get, uh, get out there in some form or another as, as bottlings, as official bottling lines. But not all of them. Uh, a lot of them really only appear as, as limited editions uh, in the Flora and Fauna series that no one ever buys. Or you just have to go chase them down in the independence. Um, and a lot of cases, like, you know, it's, it's hard to fault them. Like, like I love, um, there's, there's a bunch of Diageo distillers I've talked about in the past that I would, that I really love and I would love to see more of. Well, Glen Ord actually has its own bottling line. It's, 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 it's only in, in Asia though. Uh, but Tiananik, um, I love Tiananik. It really doesn't get out there. But, you know, if Diageo came up to me and was like, yeah, but we're already selling like Kleinlish and Oban as its own line. I, you know, I, I don't know if I could argue with that. Those are really, really good distilleries. Um, but when you go to the space side, it's hard to avoid the sense that maybe some of the choices they made are n not the right ones. Um, here's what I mean like Morlock. You know, has its own line. I can't argue with that. Great distillery. Uh, Crag and Moore. They really need to improve the presentation of Crag and Moore, but again, I can't argue. Really, really good distillery. Interesting distillery. But, I mean... You know, I'm not saying Cardu is bad. Uh, I'm not saying um, that you shouldn't be paying attention to Nakando. I'm not saying... There isn't uh, some good whiskey coming out of Glendullen, but, uh, you know, if we're choosing a brand to put on the international market that has to have a really characterful distillate, I, I think maybe we can do better. So t today is, we're, we're going to try three of the, the backbenchers uh, from Yagio that just basically don't get official bottlings. And uh, they're all from the space side. And they're just to make it this a fair fight, they're all uh, from sherry casks of one form or another. Um, all 46% independent bottlings. Uh, yeah, and uh, let's go. So what do I got? I got a, a Ben Rinnes, um, which I'm not going to lie. Like, this is the one. If At the end of this, I like, if I'm going to pitch one of these to Diageo to say, hey, this is the one that needs its own brand, like... I'm not going to lie. I'm thinking it's going to be Ben Rins. Ben Rins is uh, hugely characterful, has often been considered up there with Morlock. Um, they've got Warren Tubbs. They used to do triple distillation up until around 2007. Partial dis triple distillation, I'm sorry. Um, but then they cut that out. This is after that. This is a 2012. But uh, I'm still expecting a lot from this. I like I liked Ben Rins a lot. This is a uh, this is something from my archives. This is a Dal Ewan from uh, distilled in two thousand and seven, because I, for some reason, I couldn't find a more recent, clearly sherry influenced Dal Ewan. So I'm popping this uh, Dal Ewan, kind of really right north of Ben Rinnes. Ben Rinnes is kind of on the outskirts of Aberlour, um, actually by, right by Ben Rinnes the mountain. Uh, Dalyun is a little bit further north. And then just to kind of round up the lineup, Inchgower uh, from the Ultimate. Uh, these are both from the Ultimate, Van Wies. Um, Inchgower is it's from much, much further north. It's like the far, or, I'm sorry, east. Um, northeast. Far northeast of the Speyside region. Uh, it's It seems to be well guarded. I haven't really... It's not one I really know very well. I've only had maybe two Ben Rinna's bottlings. They were both like basically sherry bombs. So uh, curious to see. Um, no warm tubs, kind of fast distillation. It has a reputation for spiciness. We'll see how that goes. Anyways, let's get dip into these. This is, uh, we'll start with the, uh, the Ben Rinna's here, which again is, uh, I'm hoping this takes it. Uh, Benarin is 2012. This is cast number 310535. 
basically the 2012 to uh, 2022, 46%. First fill, Hogshead, and it looks like a, a Sherry Hogshead. Well, let's see what we got. Again, Worm Tubs, I'm expecting a lot. And we're definitely getting like uh, something kind of on the grungier s side of Sherry Space Eye. Um, Ovaltine with a little bit of orange peel. A little bit of dried grass. Yeah, Benrins and also Dalyuan. I mean, they're pretty close to each other. Uh, can both bring kind of grassy elements, a little bit of a space sidey herbaceous hint. <clears throat> Wildflower honey. White pepper. Um, a little bit of coffee, like a like more of a higher acid, like a like a Kenyan uh, double A or something. There's a little bit of a confectionery note. It's like uh, like almost like a um, like a lemon pastry, like a lemon croissant thing, or more like a actually more like pancakes, uh, but. You like you took some lemon sauce and you put it on there. That doesn't make any sense, but that, bear with me. And then there's just a little touch of like some heavy metals. I'm imagining that's the that's the worm tubs. Nice kind of grunge. It's it's not a super duper complex nose, but it's 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 very kind of space eye but appealingly dirty. And I like that on the palette. Again, similar kind of story. I mean, it's not, it's not as super complex as I, I tend to expect. Uh, this, is, this is a cleaner Ben Rinas than, than I was kind of looking for, but still pretty nice. Follows in that kind of, Ovaltine and marmalade kind of character. Like Ovaltine and marmalade on pancakes is a lot of what this is. Um, but again, there's a little bit of a nice grassiness. Mm -hmm. Grassiness, kind of a like a puer tea leaves thing. Black pepper. What is that? Like a, like a pickled ginger thing? Um, cough drops like like lemon cough drops that kind of that honey note but it's really kind of wrapped into the uh the cough drops on the palette a little bit of metallic you know fun metallic grunge um ah. it's good it's nice it's not blowing my mind um but no i like this it's it's a very competent characterful sherry malt which is kind of what i was looking for um i'm gonna give this some water and we shall move on daluan daluan again also just outside of aberlauer um further north this is an old, old, old Gordon McPhail bottling. Um, this was, it's 799 bottles, so I imagine this was a sherry butt. Uh, but cast number 12612, still 97, bottled 2009. Um, but it sure looks, looks sherried, again, 46%. And this was picked by um, Maxwell Street Trading, which I think used to be the uh, Illinois distributor for Gordon McPhail way, way back in the day. And yeah, let's uh, let's get to this. Ooh. I mean, it's, in some ways, there's there there's definitely a sim sim a family resemblance of character, but it's a little bit the emphasis is different. So, um. Earl Grey is a lot of what I'm getting, but it's like Earl Grey with, you're going to throw some tangerine in there along with the uh, the bergamot peel. It's 
certainly a lot of much more like straightforward orchardy fruit, like some green apple. Porridge. Um, kind of old tea bags on top of the Earl Grey. Also has a little bit of grassiness. Also has a little bit of like a hot smoky metal thing. Like you, I don't know, left some aluminum foil out in the sun too long. I, 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 I know what I'm saying. I don't know if you do. A um, little touch of like something aniseedy, like a little bit of black licorice. Um, honeydew honey, like like bitter sour honey. A little like uh, like a quince jam thing. Um, ginger again it's it's actually with the exception of that kind of up front like tangerine nose it's actually pretty shy it smells nice though um all right let's let's do it see what happens on the palate i did have the cork disintegrate on this one so there's still little bits of chunks of broken cork Floating around in this. No, it's not going to hurt you. Don't, don't worry about it too much. Again, kind of follows follows the nose. Orange. More just straight up like navel orange than tangerine this time. Lemon peel, Earl Grey. Apples and pears. Um... Like more sour apples and pears. That porridge thing again. There's a little bit of like oriental tobacco, like grassy, lemony tobacco. Fennel. Um, uh, there's a little bit of like, a, a, <laughs> this is going to sound funny, a little bit of a kombucha note. Um, I couldn't resist. Cherry Coke. Oh, yeah. There is totally a little bit of Cherry Coke in this. That kind of, like, hot metal thing, too. That's the, that's, that's good old warm tubs. Um. I mean, I guess, yeah, the, the general sense, again, is it's competent. It's got character. It's, it's got more character than Cardew. Um. But a little bit unexceptional, uh, which is sort of annoying. Just a little bit annoying. I mean, so when I, let me tell you a secret. Uh, here at Different Spirits, I don't do a whole lot of like scotchy whiskey reviews or anything um, because there's plenty of them out there and you can find other resources and the algorithm ain't gonna reward that. Um, but I feel like when when I do do scotch reviews, I want to just like mog on everyone. I want to find like the distillery no one, no one is talking about and be like, this is awesome. It's a great value. Here's my awesome description of it. And I, I want to, I want to do that. But it's, um, I don't know these, 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 are, they're fine, but they aren't really kind of hitting where I want them to hit um, just yet. They aren't expensive or anything, but I, I feel like you can you can get official bottlings around the same prices as these, and um, or I guess the Dalio, similar you know modern ver equivalents of this Dalio and this eleven year old. Um, you, could, you you can find better official bottlings from other distilleries that that are a hair a bit better than this for yeah, and that's annoying. That's annoying. There's, I still like them better than Cardew, though. All right, let's move on to the Inchgower. Again, this is a this is has a little bit of a cheat over on the videos because it's a 14 year old, 2008, 222, cast number eight, zero one four nine three, uh, 46 percent natural color, non chill, chill filtered, uh, matured in hogshead, and I think it's sherry hogshead. Here we go. Again, I don't know much about Inchgower. I've had some sherry bombs from them. They were fine on the nose. 
Hello. Whoa. Um, okay, my first thought, sticking my nose into this, um, was I thought I was getting Pete, but it's not Pete. Um, kind of coming back to it. No, no, it's, it's not Petey. It's like, it's just very maritime, which I wasn't expecting. Um, there's like a, a salted barley, like sea salt caramel thing happening here, uh, which I'm totally into. Yeah, like, wow, okay. Not gonna lie, I was, ex I, I had this in here really to kind of fill out an order and to fill out this lineup. Um, this is kind of stealing the show a little bit for me. Red curry, walnuts. A little quince again. But then like chocolate orange, that kind of oval tea thing I was getting, um, on, I think on the Ben Rinas, was it? Oatmeal again, white pepper. Masala chai, absolutely. Some kitchen, let's just like bunches of kitchen herbs, um, like smoked kitchen herbs. Black tea leaves. It, it's, this is just like, a, this is actually pretty interesting. And it, it's it's really this combination of the the, the sherry space side notes I expect with this kind of maritime nature that I'm not expecting that is kind of making this work for me. I mean, it's like, right, it's not that far from the sea, right? I mean, I don't know. I don't know how this is happening. Um, I don't know why, why it, I don't know why this smells like this, but it's awesome. All right, on the palette. Killer. Righteous. Um, oh, yeah. The finish is just... It's just hanging on. It's not letting up. Um, salted, peppery, malted milk balls with, like, some mixed nuts kind of mixed in them. Like, so, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's... It's salty, it's chocolatey, it's nutty. It's a little spice, it's a little spicy spice. Um, yeah, and it's, it's got like tons of length, tons of complexity. I'm, I'm, I did not see this coming. Here we go. One more time. Yeah, and it just keeps, keeps coming. Orange peel, Darjeeling. Ginger beer, masala chai, cardamom, cinnamon thing, oatmeal, uh, stoved red tobacco. Yeah, this is oily. It's spicy. Um, it's salty, and it's just really cool. This reminds me of something. Um, I want to say Pulteney, but it isn't, it's not really. It's got some of the, the fun fruity maltiness of, and the saltiness of Pulteney, but it, let me think about this. We'll come back. We'll come back. We may not have a winner. I mean, this Inchgower may have like just snuck in from nowhere and stolen it from, uh, from my two favorites here. Okay, let's go back through. All right, back to the Benrins. On the nose gets kind of a little bit more honeyed with water a little bit more confected yeah I mean it, <clears throat> it's nice and grassy it's showing off a it's it it's a representing that kind of other side of space side I talk about the more herbal grassy side pretty well but I got to say, like, if this is a representation of, like, post-partial tri triple distillation Ben Rinas, I might, like, 
go out of my way to seek out like 2006 bottles of Ben Rins. Um Because I don't think this... This is not scratching that same itch for me. But it's nice. On the palate... Grassy chocolate orange. And I'm into it. Um, again. Um, yeah, orange. Tea. Super nice. Pleasant, good, kind of refreshing. Um, this is something to put in your lineup in the same kind of slot you would put like a Lowland whiskey because that that grassy freshness. Pleasant, it's good, it's a hair bit simple. No complaints. Um, score wise, I'm gonna call this an 84, 84 out of 100. Um, not blowing my mind, but very good, very competent, worth a grab if this sounds like your jam. Uh, Del Yuen, 11 year old. On the nose. Yeah, it's it's really like uh, <laughs> like tangerine and apple. That's that's a lot of what this is. Again, it's nice. Not a whole, not a huge huge change from before. A little bit more fruit, a little bit less graininess on the palate. Um, on the palette is the, well, it's, it's like the, the grass and the, the orange that really went out. Um, similar level of quality to the Ben Rins, honestly. Uh, it's pretty stylistically similar too. Let me try this one more time. I think the Del Yuen Beats wins on the nose. It just got a little bit more punchy nose. The Ben Rinas has a little bit more length on the palate. Uh, I'm going to call it a wash. I think both of these get an 84 points. 84 for the Del Yuen. 11 uh, year old from 97. And back to the Inchgower, um, which is really kind of the surprise of the lineup here. All right, on the nose, now with water. Every single time I have to tell myself, no, 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 that's not peat. You're just smelling some, something I like, but it's not actually peat. Buna Haben. Buna, yeah. Oh my, yeah, okay, this is totally, this is totally competitor for Buna Haben. That's what this is. That's totally what this is. Uh, yeah, that, okay, that, that kind of makes, okay, so short fermentation time, right? You know, also an Ilo thing. Like that's how most of the distilleries on Ilo go. Maritime, but not actually peated. Yeah, I'm sherried. Okay, yeah, I mean, I mean, Buna Hoppin heads, look into this. Um, it smells like spicy, salty baby back ribs. Um, baby back, eating baby back ribs by the seaside. That's what it smells like. And it's kind of awesome. On the palate. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah. <clears throat> Not a, any huge changes with water. But I didn't really need it. Maybe a little bit more pepper now. Um, but yeah, it's got the finish hangs on, good mouth presence, really complex.
total surprise. Um, this is this is delightful. This is really good. Um, this would be the one. Like if I'm if I'm pitching these two, I mean honestly, like if I'm pitching one of these two, I'm being like, hey Diageo, you should make a brand for these. And they're like, why? And I'm like, well, this is a kind of slightly grungy, warm tubby space cider, and it deserves your time. And they're like, eh, we've already got we've already got Crag and Moore and and and, and Morlock. This I come over and I'm like, hey, you put put this out, you can start to box with. Buna having 12 year old with um, entry level book bro brooklotties and stuff. It's a super, super serious, delicious malt. This, this wins it. Um, 86 plus. 86 plus points for this um, Inchgauer. And uh, yeah, that's the lineup. 84s for these two. 86 plus here. Um, yeah, did not see this one coming. Thanks for watching and cheers.